everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming. 250 of us in here. Do me a favor and destroy that like button for me. Obliterate the like for me, Elio Trades. Thank you so much. All right, let's dive in. Q4 2020 is set to be one of the most transformative financial events in history. We're sitting on the brink of one of the most important crises and one of the most important transitions in the history of our monetary system. And it's beyond cryptocurrency. It's beyond just the crisis that we're in, which I won't be naming for the reasons of I don't want this piece of content to be censored. But we're on the brink of an entire shift in the way we come to understand value, the way we come to transact and measure value globally. And this is all centering around transitions that for the first time in history, you can take advantage of, you can actually invest in, and you can make profit from. If you guys have been following the channel, we've been covering some of the most explosive trends in cryptocurrency, and those trends have been creating whirlwind profits for anyone who's been investing in these emerging technologies, these emerging protocols. And right now, we've had confirmation of what I have been really going over for months now, which is that the stimulus measures have no signs of stopping and that the current crisis that we're in, at least in the United States with this economy, is showing only signs of strengthening to the downside. And that means that the one single silver bullet that the government has to try to fix this entire situation, printing money, is set to continue at unprecedented rates. This unprecedented printing of the US dollar has been absolute rocket fuel for both the mainstream tech stocks, NASDAQ, S&P 500, as well as our beloved cryptocurrency. And for that reason, we're going to show how this most recent round of stimulus, what it says about the next few months, and then of course, what we can expect from the trends that we've been covering and where the biggest opportunities in the entire space will be. And if you guys are excited for this, do me a favor, destroy that like button because we have a lot of amazing information to cover today. I'm gonna take a second here and see if there's any chats that I missed. No big chats yet. All right, guys, we'll dive in. Okay. And throw on the filter here. Bitcoin has just closed its first weekly candle in two and a half years that is showing this level of bullishness. We have confirmation for the first time in months that we are actually in a breakout mode with Bitcoin. And of course, that's critical because Bitcoin has been known as a general signal of health for the entire crypto economy. Of course, of this recent run, we've seen altcoins move dramatically before Bitcoin, but that's a very, very recent revelation. That's not normally how alt seasons tend to progress. Thank you guys, definitely smash that like button. Right now, this weekly close is extremely bullish for the future of cryptocurrencies. Because if Bitcoin continues to break out past 12,000, which is a critical level of resistance, we can see what would look like a rocket up to 14K. And if it breaks through that, then we'll be testing our all-time highs, 20,000 as resistance. And we know that if Bitcoin is to come back from the dead, as they would pretty much have called it for the last two and a half to three years, that the effect on the markets would be absolute pandemonium. The fact that this asset that was completely declared dead would be seen as indestructible once again, knowing that if we pass our all-time highs and form new highs, that the king of all cryptos, Bitcoin, could be seen once again as a flawless and indestructible, unkillable asset. And that would have a serious effect on the markets where they're being markets that are being flooded with free or extremely low cost new capital in the form of printed new money. So this capital is all finding a home since the, begin, since the beginning of coronavirus in Bitcoin and more specifically in emerging altcoins. So as we look here, I tweeted this uh, a couple of days ago, stimulus passed, new highs incoming. And as soon as we got uh, the bill passed by Trump, this isn't a full stimulus bill that I'm talking about, but we did get this new four executive order thing. And I think it's important to go over these and understand that these are pretty much piecemeal. But what it shows is it shows a policy of essential 
nonstop government relief. Because we know we're in election years, we know that whatever happens over the coming days, and I'm going to show a little excerpt from a segment that Altcoin Daily, my buddies did a couple of days ago, that really echoed the sentiments I've been putting forward for over a month now, which is essentially this political game is going to lead to excessive stimulus over the coming months. I don't know what happens after the election because we don't know who's going to be in power after the election, but we know that for now, the political will is to flood the economy with cash as a form of COVID relief. And even though the reality of these executive orders and these stimulus bills is not fixing the underlying problems with the economy, what we're seeing is that there is complete will to force through policy that is going to be introducing new capital into the ecosystem, new capital into the economy. And so what we're having here is essentially Trump put forth an executive order that's going to be using some FEMA funds to pay for some disaster relief for uh, the virus. And what that means is that essentially people are going to be able uh, to get some uh, increased unemployment benefits with essentially 300 of the $400 that they're trying to accomplish being paid for from these federal funds with another $100 per week being paid for by the states. Now, we don't really know how this is all going to shake out. And according to some, this is maybe not going to happen as quickly as if, of course, Congress would have passed uh, just unilaterally passed the bill, which I believe is still coming a huge land mark stimulus bill. Um, but we know here that what we see is from at least the White House, there is a policy of pushing forward relief and in the form of more money for people. And so we still have this huge landmark multi-trillion dollar bill coming. And this is more of a stopgap measure. But to me, I'm using this as a thermometer, as a temperature reading device here to say that, okay, the traditionally more conservative party in power the Republican Party is in favor of forcing through legislation that provides relief. Who knows if this continues until next year, but what we know is that none of this is fixing the underlying problem. We just have band-aids on the situation, and these band-aids are leading to excess capital in the entire economy that's leading, of course, to the ballooning of asset prices like cryptocurrency. And this is, of course, as we have the Minneapolis Federal Reserve is calling for stricter lockdowns. So I don't believe the lockdowns are anywhere close to over. We're hearing San Francisco pushing forward legislation that could increase the actual severity of the lock of the severity of the lockdown significantly. So as we're looking at these measures being passed, and of course the reality of the situation, which is that the U.S. economy is in deep trouble right now. We've had the biggest drop in GDP growth or the GDP uh, change in productivity on record, period, bar none. We can see here that GDP growth in Q2 of 2020 dropped almost one third. And that is by far unprecedented in the history of since we've been recording this at least. And so what we know for sure is that the underlying economy is absolutely in shambles and that increasingly we will need to keep printing money, which will devalue and weaken the dollar. But what we've also seen here is a really significant revelation that China and Russia are looking to ditch the dollar. Now, I did see this covered for a minute on Ivan on Tech, and I wanted to take a second to shout out Ivan on Tech because he's been saying some really nice things about me. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to say some nice things about Ivan. He's awesome. I watch his content all the time. Keep doing what you do, Mr. Ivan. Really love what you, got, what you do for the space. And this is a huge revelation because one of the most important functions of the US dollar is to be a global reserve currency and a medium of exchange globally. And what it allows for is for the US to maintain some hegemony over global trade. Even if that global trade really has nothing to do with the United States, we're able to see that most of these transactions at some point are anchored or cleared in US dollar form and therefore need to pass through a US bank. And you can look here, Russia and China have drastically cut their use of the dollar in bilateral trade over the past several years. As late as 2015, approximately 90% of bilateral transactions were conducted in dollars. Fi <clears throat> Following the outbreak of the US-China trade war and a concerted push by both Moscow and Beijing to a move away from the dollar, however, the figure had dropped to 51%. So they've cut down almost half of their use of the US dollar in just a few years. And this is as we have the digital yuan from the Chinese government just powering up, certainly going to beat any kind of digital currency that the United States might be bringing to the frame. Uh, certainly, they'll be the first one there. And so as we're looking at the weak 
weakening of the dollar and essentially the strengthening of China's dollar or their yuan, this is a hugely, hugely negative a uh, perfect storm here for the dollar with the weakening with the weakening of the economy the nonstop policy of uh, of printing money and constantly forcing new money into the economy with no real plans for a holistic healing way to rebuild our manufacturing and enterprise so that we are once again the country that is dominating the economy of the future. We have band-aids that we're putting on it in the form of stimulus. And so as we see a weakening of the US dollar due to these policies, we can now see that this will actually be exponentially increased by a move away from the dollar and actually a move to threaten this reserve currency status. Status. Not that I think the digital yuan is necessarily stronger now or showing signs of it. I think there's a lot of mistrust towards that currency right now. But this is a trend that is certainly going to be sped up by the recent events. And all of this, all of this swirls together to form what I consider to be a perfect storm for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Of course, other assets will do phenomenally in this environment as well. However, for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, we have a perfect storm of brewing. Now, one of the reasons is, at least for the next three months, I'm highly confident that this storm will keep going is we're in an election year. And Altcoin Daily actually did an amazing video on this, uh, which I, uh, I'll try to link in the description. I don't know if I can do it while I'm live streaming. They did a great uh, segment here where they showed how pretty much almost exclusively without fail, election, uh, election years tend to lead to big pumps in the economy. And well, we know that the White House can be highly influential over federal policy, over monetary policy, which can then influence the economy. Generally, people vote with their pocketbooks. So if we see a big push in the economy, generally that makes it safer for the incumbent. Regardless of how or why, we know that the statistics favor a more ballooning, more vibrant economy in the lead up 100 days to a presidential election. And this is highly favorable for essentially the continuation of the trend. As we know, the actual economy can't stimulate this growth. There has to be the stimulus coming from a federal policy of printing more money. So if you guys are excited, essentially, by what this means for your US dollar denominated investments in cryptocurrency, then do me a favor and destroy that like button. And if you also like Bob Ross, destroy the like button. Because guess what? We're painting a very pretty picture of how this Bitcoin and cryptocurrency thing could really change your life. And I believe that. I believe we're in a moment that is not a once in a four year cycle moment. I don't think this happens once every four years, right? This doesn't happen once every four years. This happens once every generation, once every lifetime. This crisis is going to cause a transition, a transfer of wealth on the scale that we haven't seen before. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies were already doing that. But now when you add in this economic crisis, which is going to essentially weaken the dollar at a rate that we can only really guess from right now, this is going to create, I think, an exponential multiplier on what's already happening. Furthermore, the title of this video is that Q4 2020 could change your life. And I believe that because not only are we going to see an exponential continuation of the trends that have been present here in crypto land over the last several years or the last several months, rather, sorry, we're going to see a normie wave because we still haven't seen the normies come in yet. We haven't seen anyone outside of cryptocurrency flood in. This is still an internal phenomenon where people within the space are either adding more capital. There's a couple of early movers, but for the most part, even the quote unquote smart money, the VCs are still not doubling down and getting into crypto because they got burned so hard last time. And that's what's going on is the sentiment has not reset yet. Even if the numbers have, and even if the charts have, the sentiment has still not reset itself to those 2017, 2016 levels where literally we are able to have 100,000 X growth. And if you remember in 2017, there were huge waves of new users coming in to the ecosystem. Remember, Bitcoin is fundamentally a network and the value of Bitcoin should be related to the new users or user growth of that network. And so understanding that new users are not really flooding into Bitcoin as fast as they were in the previous cycles and that that user growth will lead to an exponential growth of the network value, I believe you need to understand that all of this is still a precursor. All of this is still an introductory phase for what is happening. And I'm going to explain that even more with some more data points coming up. So looking at Q4 of 2020, this, um, yeah, I will, I will try to get to that super chat in a second. Thank you, Zaza Joe. Um, so introducing the Q4 
uh, revelations here in the industry. And some of this was written, obviously, before the revelation that uh, the total value locked in DeFi has already exceeded 10 billion, right? Uh, but Bitcoin is beginning its post having push. This has already happened. And like I said, I believe this is largely a factor of excess stimulus flooding the market. So whether or not this is completely organic to the Bitcoin chart, whether or not this is the stock to flow ratio, the stock to flow model rather in practice, I don't think we can conclude that just yet. But I do believe that it is beginning for whatever reason, it's post having push towards a new equilibrium, which in general leads to an excessive overly bought crazy bubble mode, which I think could bring in you know, if we're lucky here on a super cycle, this could be Bitcoin reaching a billion users. Now, we also have Ethereum 2.0. Ethereum 2.0 should not be underestimated here because the only thing holding Ethereum back from going absolutely crazy right now are the excessive fees and the congestion of the network. If Ethereum is, is to scale, if Ethereum is to launch their 2.0 version, which we are uncertain of at this moment, we could be looking at a huge huge ballooning value for Ethereum as far as a token with its staking rewards, as well as that ecosystem that's been cultivated around the Uniswap, around things like uh, essentially this decentralized, amazing DeFi ecosystem will be given the bandwidth it needs to thrive on the mainstream level. Because we know if there's congestion already today, then we know in the world of tomorrow where we get a new 100 million users, a billion users, maybe of those billion users, 10 million are interested in DeFi, this could be an explosion to the really to the size that we could never really quantify or imagine before. And if that happens, it's Ethereum's going to grind to a halt. So we need an ETH2. And if they do this, it's going to be massive, right? So assuming that ETH2 comes out this year, assuming that that's possible, Q4 is set to have a growth pattern that is exponential. Same with Polkadot. Polkadot is promising the interoperability solutions of the future, promising a way to offload uh, some of the bandwidth, some of the processing power that we desperately need here in crypto land. And so Polkadot's full functionality is something that you should not be sleeping on. Every product in the Polkadot ecosystem is absolutely mooning. It's insane. And obviously, a lot of other YouTubers have been covering this, but I'm going to do my best to do a comprehensive coverage of Polkadot going forward because this is quite clearly one of the most influential projects in the space. Also, we have the Facebook-led Libra project initiating some of its launch structure here. So don't forget, Mark Zuckerberg is not going away. He's a stubborn individual. He is an absolute uh, tyrant in some ways in the way he goes after certain goals. I know that uh, he's certainly controlled the social ecosystem of all of our apps in, in a very, very scary and uh, sort of monopolistic way. And he sees the future of Facebook as a financial services company. And so with that in mind, understand that he's going to push his billions of users into fintech, into blockchain. And it's going to start whether or not the congressional leaders like it or not, he's going to keep pushing. And finally, we have the election, which we definitely discussed already. But Q4 of this year is going to be jam-packed with events that could be transformational for the cryptocurrency and blockchain industry. There's 826 people watching this right now. So blessed to have you all. Do me a favor and destroy that like button if you like the content that you're hearing today. So... I'm going to move on a little bit and talk, you know, obviously, before we just finish this, uh, Max Kaiser is saying that the tensions around Asia are leading to capital flight in the form of Bitcoin. I believe that. We heard that major uh, influencers, social influencers in uh, Asia and China specifically are promoting Bitcoin. And so there will be more of this, not just from the West, right? The Bitcoin and cryptocurrency worlds are a global phenomenon. So understand that all global events can influence this. And capital flight out of Asia is going to be part of the story here. And this is a chart, as we transition to the next phase of this video, this is a chart that is absolutely amazing to see, which is the DeFi total value locked. And this is lining up, of course, the red line is the DeFi total value locked, and it's you know stopping here at uh, 1.5 billion, so this is a little bit of an old metric. However, the total value locked here is starting to keep pace, but obviously with this recent explosion, completely outpacing the ICO cycle, right? The ICO cycle that brought in tens of billions of dollars into new investments into the space. This is going to be made to look like a little molehill, considering the DeFi boom is in itself a bit of an ICO cycle, except they're doing it in more creative ways. They're not being called ICOs per 
say, but this is the reality, is that brand new DeFi projects are popping up left, right, and center, providing some resource for the community, doing essentially liquidity pool offerings or bonding sale, bonding curve sales. These are just new ways to say that they're having their token sales in new and different ways, but the reality is these are very much so ICOs. They're very much so serving more utility than the ICOs of yesteryear, and this particular chart shows you that we're on track for an absolute explosion. Anyone who's turned their back on altcoins right now has turned their back on what is, without a doubt, the biggest opportunity of 2020 and perhaps one of the biggest opportunities of a lifetime. Here we have DeFi announcements and DeFi news being covered on Yahoo Finance as if this is just some very common mainstream financial news here. And we have essentially an article on how Compound is releasing its own price oracle great, but you wouldn't expect to see this on Yahoo Finance until very recently, showing the mainstream appeal that DeFi has, and this has all kinds of tingles, reminding me of the 2017 ICO era. And finally, we have a CoinGecko index here on the Oracle solutions in the market. And this is one of the things that I think is easily one of the easiest opportunities, the biggest opportunities in the space, and now being given its own CoinGecko index, which is the decentralized Oracle, starting, of course, with the, uh, the King, Chainlink, and then we have Band. Now, what's very important to understand here is that these are the most price reactive DeFi assets because they're quite clearly needed by all DeFi projects. These oracles are the, essentially, to me, the equivalent of the smart contract platforms of this wave. And the reason is because they are, even though we already have our layer ones, the reality is, is that we are looking at these new protocols that are essentially foundational layers for these new exciting uh, group of assets. Just like the DAP platforms and the ICO platforms were needed for those new ICOs, these uh, oracles are needed for price information. Oracles are needed for DeFi. It's like you can't have one without the, uh, the other, or they need to build their own oracles. And with projects like Chainlink and Band, the need to build your own oracle is just less significant. So looking at this index, we can see whether or not you agree that Chainlink is worth $5 billion, the reality of the situation is you have no way to disprove that right now. There's nothing you can do to prove to me that it's not worth $5 billion, and there's nothing you can do to prove to me that it is worth $5 billion. We can both make arguments based on essentially circumstantial data. However, there's no way to prove or disprove this. So in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king here. And having a niche here that we know is set to be extremely price reactive and successful, just like the smart contracts platforms of the 2017 era, having a narrative that these are needed for DeFi and DeFi is the hottest thing since sliced bread, and then having points of comparison, understanding that at least the king, the leader here, Chainlink, is pushing new highs at what seems like in nonstop pace. They just won't stop pushing new highs. Then we have points of comparison, seeing that band in my opinion, in some ways, and don't scrutinize me too much for this, has better documentation and seems like a little bit easier uh, to integrate than Chainlink. Uh, but obviously, I just really like Band. I think they have their stuff together. I think Chainlink will always be the king of this space, don't get me wrong. But you know, Chainlink's looking like the Ethereum, whereas these other ones are trying to learn from Chainlink and potentially add more value. Um, like I said, I don't think Chainlink ever gets dethroned by market cap, but Band here at 311 million still could almost do a 20 X and it would still uh, and it would catch up to Chainlink, but I think in the time that it would 20x, you're looking at Chainlink at least two, three, four xing, right? So you're looking at points of comparison here, and then as we get lower down this list, right? As we get lower down this list to things like uh, Zap, DOS, Dia, uh, Dia, sorry, and Teller, these at the bottom here, the sort of sub 50 mils, these are the real opportunities, right? Because I believe. Something like Dia, which I've covered extensively, uh, DOS, which you know I didn't invest a huge amount into because I wasn't as convinced by the product, but I definitely uh, brought it up as like, hey, this is by far the lowest uh, market cap Oracle. Since I covered it, it went up like 7x crazy stuff. Um, these all have a point of comparison of $5 billion, right? So here at 21 million, Dia has a point of comparison of 5,000 million compared to its 21 million. So could it 100x from here and still be half the value of Chainlink? Yeah, it could 100x and still be not even half the value of Chainlink. Remember when I said there's no real accurate way to measure the value of these ecosystems yet. 
Think about Tesla. Think about the ecosystems where people are the, the assets, where people are trading not based on today's value, but based on tomorrow's value. And that's very much so the case with these decentralized oracles, is that you're not buying what they're doing today, you're buying what they're doing tomorrow. People aren't buying Tesla's earnings report from 2019, they're buying Tesla's solutions to energy for 2030, right? That's how the prices are getting so big. And that's the same thing here, is people are betting that these particular systems could quote unquote take over and by taking over that they could really you know balloon in value to hundreds of billions or if not more right and so that's why Chainlink will keep pumping. That's why Band will keep chasing it. That's why all of these will have a narrative and a, a pretty much simple mathematical logical explanation why these could be worth more. Does that guarantee you anything? No, that doesn't guarantee you anything. And as Ivan would say, you need to have your big boy pants on when you make these decisions, understanding that if you're hoping for a 1,000x or 100x return, that you should be ready for an 80% loss, if not more. And so this explains, of course, how Link is starting to outpace things like Bitcoin in volume, because Link is obviously what people have come to realize as the easiest way to get exposure to the DeFi trend, the most surefire thing with the most high-level partnerships, the easiest accessibility to buy from fiat, the most on and off ramps, uh, all of the above, right? The ability to support, invest in Link, and the potential for this project are all pretty high as far as, if not first tier, and seeing flippings like this in volume here on Binance are just the beginning of how you can estimate the true value of this trend. And so I'm actually going to bring up... Uh, DeFi rate because, or DeFi pulse, because the uh, total value locked uh, in, in DeFi has exploded. And I don't know if this is showing it. I saw somewhere earlier that they had over 10 billion locked due to the chain link pump, but maybe, I, maybe I'm not seeing that right. At any rate, uh, so as we see here, uh, what I found absolutely ridiculous is this news report that essentially Congress in the United States is pushing for more sensible tax legislation on staking rewards. And this isn't just, hey, give us more sensible uh, tax regulations on crypto trading or holding crypto or crypto gains, if you will. This isn't about Bitcoin forks. This is about staking rewards, showing you that now at the congressional level, we have an understanding of what are the pain points and what are the interest points for digital currency in 2020. Of course, DeFi is largely built around staking rewards and passive yields. And so if we see here that the United States Congress is appealing for reasonable tax legislation, then I think we're in a whole new category of growth for the industry, of understanding of the industry, how fast the actual regulators are starting to understand the shifts in the industry. And of course, looking at this makes me extremely bullish on the continuation of this DeFi trend. Looking at Yahoo Finance covering DeFi makes me extremely bullish on the future of the DeFi trend. So as we look here and we make our way uh, into other altcoins here, I just want to underscore and underline and emphasize how bullish this is for the next few months and how Q4 2020 is really an opportunity to completely transform your financial future because I think things will go to uh, unprecedented new highs. I think there's possibility not just for an all-time high in Bitcoin, but for DeFi to essentially bust through and even eclipse the ICO era. So right now we're going to take a second and check in on one of my babies on this channel, which is of course Anchor. Uh, we covered Anchor uh, about, what was it, like a week ago. Um, it's priced right here. I think it was like August 5th or something. Uh, and I'm just passionate about this project. I covered it, yeah, right here at about five cents, six cents. Um, I'm just passionate about this project and I love it. And since I covered it, this thing has just been absolutely smashing it all the way up to 18 cents uh, earlier today. This is over 300% and starting to break its trends, right? Starting to shatter its previous highs, its he's, uh, previous resistances. It has resistance, uh, or it looks like it broke that, right? Um, but now we're seeing it potentially break out. We see some resistance up here. Is this right? Or is it at new all-time highs? I can't tell. Um, throw, me in a, throw me a chat message if it's at new all-time highs. I can't tell from this uh, coin market cap chart or this coin gecko chart. Uh, but it, it's showing you, right, uh, that we are staying on the forefront of what's popping here. We're staying on the forefront of what coins are going to transform the space and where the value is. And so you guys want to be subscribed with the bell notification on. So when I put out new content, you can be the first ones to see it as we covered Anchor at about 30 million and it's here pushing 100 million market cap now. 
Let me know if you guys were in Anchor. Let me know if you guys are excited for the future of Anchor, of course, in the comment section, in the chat. And if you guys haven't already smashed that like button, do me a favor and destroy that thing. Anon with a 499, great live, Elliot. What do you think about Teller, TRB, token distribution? No pre-mine, no ICO, no dumping by the founders like Ample. True. So uh, obviously I've been a little disappointed by the performance of Ample. I'm still holding on to mine, but I'm not encouraging anyone to get in because obviously the narrative and the opportunity I believe is bigger in these smaller cap DeFi coins. However, Teller, like I, I've shown on the screen today, I think fits into a category that is a no-brainer category, right? This index is a no-brainer, right? Chainlink has shown that its community and its hype are unmatched. And I haven't seen growth like this out of anything except for Ethereum. I think it'll cozy up to Ethereum as the number three altcoin in the world or the number three crypto in the world. I think it'll have a, a market cap in the valuation of tens of billions, uh, definitely definitely the tens of billions, potentially more, right? I think Ethereum is on uh, on track to be worth uh, definitely over 1,000 and potentially over 10,000 in this bull run. And with that, it can cozy up next to Ethereum and be worth, you know, over 100 billion. I think that's my personal belief as to where we're headed. Band, I believe, has an easy route to continue to keep pace with Chainlink. The more Chainlink pumps, the more Band pumps. I think it's going to be a symbiotic relationship like that. And Band's product is out, functional. They're making amazing pro uh, partnerships. And I will con expect a strong continuation of this as the Pepsi to the Chainlink Coca Cola. Now we're looking at the real sort of low cap opportunities here, which are significantly higher in risk, significantly higher in reward. Seeing Tellor catch up to be a 100 million market cap, seeing Zap catch up to be a 100 million market cap, seeing DOS catch up to be a 100 million market cap, seeing Daya catch up to be a 100 million market cap, 300, 400 as these grow. I think it's all possible. And certainly this space to me is the no brainer, easy, set it and forget it space, because as this bull run continues, right? This bull run could cease to exist with the, you know, the uh, Congress essentially stopping their stimulus. If that happens, who knows what's going to happen? It's uncertain, right? We don't control those uh, external variables. But as long as stimulus continues, and I believe it will for at least the next few months, this is a no-brainer category. No-brainer, right? You're getting all the access, the, the exposure to the DeFi category. You're getting these platforms that are clearly the most price reactive. And we know that the narratives are very strong here in crypto land, and there's no way to disprove in any way the value of these narratives right now. Uh, and so I also found this out. This was a scandal going on in the Sora community, XOR Sora, uh, part of the Polkadot community or part of the Polkadot ecosystem that MXC Exchange uh, was essentially stopping people from withdrawing it for several days now. And so I would like to draw attention to this. So if you guys want to go to my Twitter and help by retweeting this uh, for awareness, we want to get people to essentially either remove their funds from MXC. I think that's a good way and just boycott the exchange until they let people have access to their funds. Uh, Twitter.com slash Elio Trades. Again, sorry for the siren in the background. And then, of course, let's add in some memory here for sure uh, as we have uh, pretty much the mantra for me of 2020, which is, why are we buying new things uh, besides, of course, Bob Ross shirts? Uh, it, and we should be buying crypto. Uh, I've been buying crypto with a crazy pace. And so I think uh, anyone who's been doing what I've been doing, you've probably been experiencing what I've been experiencing, which is a dramatic swelling of your portfolio. So that's about it for me right now as far as topics that I wanted to cover. Um, I think right now the easy set it and forget it, no brainer money is in following this decentralized Oracle and DeFi movement. I'm going to be covering a lot of really amazing coins. The thing is, a lot of the best opportunities that have been brought to me lately have been, um, how should I say, less than 100% obvious and credible. I, I've been seeing a lot of projects that have been brought my way that definitely pump, they have hype, but I can't in good conscience promote something where I haven't used the product, I can't see the actual liquidity and use case, and really it's just you know anonymous avatars that are bringing me these opportunities. And yet, at the same time, some of these people have been very reliable in the information they've provided me. So it's kind of this weird moment where the DeFi wave is really being kind of pushed forward by this underground crypto community. There's a lot of builders in the DeFi wave that are not your big marketing sort of budget type people. They're just building and pumping stuff out. And sometimes these coins are very much so like anonymous projects. And that doesn't really stop them from being valuable. 
And so I'm kind of coping with how I can bring this information to you in a credible way without essentially front running. Uh, for example, there's a, a project called Trade, Unitrade, and it looked good. And I sort of wanted to bring it up to you guys for about a week now, uh, but I hadn't been able to actually confirm that their project is fully legit and that it's actually going to be doing what it says they're going to be doing. And that, you know, this anonymous team, uh, who, by the way, was uh, associated with John McAfee, who I personally know to be at the center of so many scandals that it's kind of this weird uh, weird wave where the projects with overly done marketing budgets, maybe those are distractions, maybe those are overpriced, maybe that's actually not the real opportunity. And so I'm trying to bring you coins as fast as I can without necessarily jumping the gun and essentially promoting something before it's fully proven out. So that's the kind of uh, catch-22 that it's been in uh, lately. And yes, there's amazing projects like DeFi Pi. I see DeFi Pi in the chat. Uh, DOS is just beginning again. We covered DOS a while ago. DMG um, is very interesting. Uh, uh, yes, I did say that you shouldn't go all in on any of these projects. Yes, you should not be going in on all these projects. Nobody should be going all in on any of these projects. Even when I say I've got a big bag, I, if you think that means that I went all in, then you're misunderstanding, guys. You always got to understand that there is existential risk on all sides, and that is what is creating the insane and unprecedented opportunity in front of us for growth and gains. You can't have reward without risk. It doesn't work that way. And in this world, there is huge risk and also huge reward. So you need to have your ability to understand, work with that risk, and understand that betting big should still include an amount of money that you could see go completely goodbye and have it not ruin your life. Because if you're betting that big, then you're actually playing with fire, right? I still believe, however, though, if we're in this wave that continues with federal stimulus, then we'll be in a position where almost everything will continue to swell in value, at least for a little while. Okay, what do you think of Juan, the only DeFi coin that didn't pump yet? Cross-chain DeFi platform staking rewards with 30 million market cap. So if this is Wan Chain, I believe this is Wan Chain. Um, I actually haven't checked in on Wan in a very long time, so I would have to do more research, right? Um, but in the end, I believe that uh, DeFi, these projects, especially the ones that are below 10 million market cap, the ones that have a genuine use case, the ones that are actually providing more tools to decentralize this movement even further, those are potentially huge, huge opportunities uh, for the future. And in doing so, in, in producing these opportunities, uh, we can potentially ride projects from the very beginning up until they actually reach mainstream adoption. And make no mistake, we're in an era right now, a transition into a DeFi moment, a DeFi wave. And I believe that the wave probably arguably started you know, back in 2019, but the real wave started in 2019. Uh, 2020 in March. And so we're looking at just the first few months of this trend. And that early pump could be seen as just a bear market reversal. Now looking for DeFi to break through to new highs and really push the entire cryptocurrency market up to new levels. I believe we're still in phase one of many phases of this that I believe will last through 2021. So long as the policy of stimulus doesn't completely uh, vanish overnight, this could be the most transformational moment in our monetary history with the US dollar waning in popularity, new financial instruments like essentially the Chinese digital yuan, and of course the flooding of the market with free cash, we're gonna see asset prices fly through the roof in a way that may not come back and reset itself. Asset prices, I don't believe after a wave like this, will just come back down to earth. I think there's potential that we're in a super cycle where asset prices will essentially leave the station, the train will leave the station in a way that's not easy to reverse, right? Because these asset prices need to stay floated for the entire house of cards that is our modern economy to stay upright and not collapse. So this new government stimulus, in my opinion, will, will without a doubt continue to float asset prices. Meanwhile, the actual ability for your average worker and working person in the United States and probably across the globe will continue to degrade. And in this, incli in this climate, in this environment, we can see an astronomical spike in the value of real assets, property, gold, precious metals, equities, and of course, our beloved cryptocurrency. And in cryptocurrency, we're looking at a narrative. Narratives are strong. They are almost indestructible in crypto land. And they work until they don't. The trend is your friend until the end, as my friend Eric Crown would say, who's the most talented trader in the space, bar none. And it sounds silly. It sounds oversimplified. But the truth is that things work until they don't. And right now, all signs are pointed up for DeFi. So coins that are providing 
critical utilities in DeFi land are not to be underestimated as the value of the DeFi ecosystem and the value of our entire cryptocurrency markets are set to explode under the current conditions, which in my opinion, show no signs of stopping. For that reason, along with the initial launch of Facebook's Libra, the full functionality of Polkadot, which is looking like a revolutionary ecosystem for cryptocurrency, a, revolution, a revolutionary ecosystem for all of Web3 and blockchain, we're looking at the beginning of what could be a transformational moment, a super cycle that will never repeat itself on this scale. It'll make 2017 look like a molehill, and I believe that this is an opportunity to change your financial future. Of course, I could be wrong, anyone could be wrong. I'm just making what I think is hypotheses, educated assumptions based on the totality of the data. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys are interested in. And of course, I'll hop into the, uh, the chat and answer some questions uh, for the remainder of this session. Look on Dev Protocol. I'll take a look at it. Can you stake DOS? I'm not sure. Um, can, I should, can I put some more light on Ample? What do you think they're up to? I think they uh, potentially, if they get a Coinbase listing, things will pop again. Things will pop again. So I'm holding. Um, what are the best coins connected to Polkadot? There's a lot of them, and I'm going to be doing a full episode on that. So I'd prefer to wait and do that full episode Episode uh, then. DeFi Pi, still goodbye. Hard to say, guys, because DeFi Pi pumped hard. I think Zombie covered it this morning. So uh, it already pumped, and usually when things pump hard, I try to let them settle down. Um, go to the cave, man. Yes, Crown's Crypto Cave. What do you think about Harmony One? I've uh, been hearing about it for a long time. I think it's a great project, but obviously things that over pumped at the beginning and sometimes had a long slide, um, that's not where I specialize. I tend to uh, wait for things to show a tremendous amount of promise and activity, and then I shine a light on them when they, when they are, I think, the, the most ideal moment uh, to get your hands on them. Uh, yes, Teller is very exciting. Uh, they're in the right niche at the right time and still low cap. VSN and MFT, low market cap DeFi. So that's mainframe. I'm not sure what VSN is. I'll have to look into it. I'll definitely check it out. Thank you, Too Bad Mice. Thanks for the donation. Uh, thanks, Gary Singh, for the donation, guys. Uh, how would you build my portfolio for someone new to crypto uh, to hold for a few years? So if you just want to hold for a few years, you're going to want to stay in majors because the small coins move far too fast. If you want to build and just set it and forget it, that kind of portfolio, those types of portfolios, you're going to need to stick in higher value coins because the movements on these micro caps need too much babysitting, right? Something might be a great buy today and it might be a horrible buy tomorrow. So there's no easy way to do that. Obviously, the blue chips right now, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Chainlink, I think are pretty safe bets, right? Like that is to me easy money, right? If you're going to go and say, hey, unless something cataclysmic happens in the space, what are the coins that are set to appreciate? Those three are easy, easy choices to me. So that's what I would say. Um, but obviously, all of the blue chip DeFi projects, synthetics, Aave Lend, uh, you're looking at, um, let me see here, DeFi here, let me get into this view, uh, Chainlink, Compound, Maker, Synthetics, Aave, uh, Zero X, Kyber Network, Band Protocol, uh, Ren, uh, Yearn Finance, uh, Loopring, Thorchain, Kava. These are coins that I've been covering extensively. And you know the ones that are higher market cap are inherently less risky. So those are the ones that I would say are by far the easiest ones to set and forget. But of course, I encourage you to continue to do your own research. And if you want to become more active, then you can start going into the lower value ones, the ones that are under 50, under 20 uh, million market cap, and see if you uh, are able to ride those waves. Obviously, take profits after if you know if something goes up 10x, take some profits and make sure that if it collapses, uh, you still are able to benefit from that growth. Uh, things like Orion Protocol that have been absolutely beasting. We covered Orion uh, about two weeks ago, I think, and it's up massively this week. Uh, there's a lot of gems. There's new gems each and every day, so it's hard for me to cover them all in one segment. But I encourage you guys to hit that bell notification as we've been covering the best coins in the space, and I have some seriously amazing coins planned for you very soon. So I hope you guys have been enjoying the content. I hope you guys have been getting value out of it. Again, if you guys got value out of this video, I encourage you guys to hit that like button. It really helps the channel. Uh, what is this easy 20x gem? Is that your way of asking what an easy 20x gem is? Um, Thank you for the donation. Uh, like I said, I think uh, over time, you know, you're looking at something like a Daya being an easy 20x gem because I believe this space of decentralized oracles will continue to explode. And under that climate, it'll be pretty easy uh, for those to continue to grow 5, 10, 20x. 
And yeah, if there's no more questions, um, I'm gonna about to wrap this up. I owe a cash out plan. So I'm making a cash out plan video uh, very soon. That's on my content to-do list. Uh, but as always, guys, I'm just so thankful to have you guys as part of this community. Do me a favor, keep supporting the content, and I'll keep working my butt off to bring you guys the best information in the space. And of course, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. My name's Elio Trades, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.